Good morning. My name is Susan Booker. Um, I want to thank the Presidential Commission on Election Administration for coming to the state of Florida and for allowing some of the election officials to speak with you. It's an honor to participate today. I'm fairly new. I've having been elected in 2008 as the supervisor of Palm Beach County, our office is probably one of the most scrutinized in the country when it comes to elections. We have 842 precincts, 448 voting locations, and 870,182 eligible voters for the 2012 general election. 605,268 total votes were counted, or 69.56% of all of our voters. During the 2012 general election, we did not experience lines at polling locations on Election Day. In fact, the majority of our polling locations were closed prior to about 8.30 p.m. on November 6, 2012, and we reported our precinct results before midnight. However, because the legislature decreased early voting days to almost half, early voting was a tremendous challenge. From the time early voting began in the state of Florida, Palm Beach County has always experienced long lines during general elections in presidential election years. Because of the law only allowing constrained facilities, public libraries, city halls, and supervisors' offices, there was never enough space or electrical power to have early voting locations with more than two printers without blowing breakers. Our longest lines were on the final Saturday of early voting, with the legislature having eliminated the final Sunday that has always been popular for a program called Souls to the Polls on first Sunday in many black churches. The last person who got in line at our Lantana site at 7 p.m. voted at 2 a.m. in the morning. The line was that long and the voters were determined to stay in line, having been told by both political parties that their votes would be challenged at the polls on election day. That did not happen. Another delay was the long six-page ballot with 11 constitutional amendments, one of which was 664 words long. We, were also re we are also required by federal law to provide Spanish on the same ballot. The voters who brought their sample ballots with them voted faster than those who did not because they could just transfer their votes from their sample ballot. However, it took longer than usual to vote with all of the ballot questions. As you know, the legislature amended some of the laws this year that will bring back a maximum of 14 early voting days, including the final Sunday with allowance to move early voting locations to larger locations and for a minimum maximum of 12 hours a day at the discretion of the supervisor. It may be wise in the future to provide for uniform laws within the state so that there's equity in the hours and days for early voting in every county. Palm Beach County is also working on creating electronic poll books using off-the-shelf technology. Many iPads that can take a picture of the QR code on the back of your driver's license and populate your voter registration information. We know that this will go a long way in moving our voters more quickly. We have not had electronic poll books in the past, mostly because of the large expense and the difficulty of large components that have been available. This is a great example of moving election equipment forward using current technology. Absentee or vote by mail ballots are also very popular in our state. We mailed over 157,000 ballots, um, 170 military overseas, and almost 2,600 to civilian overseas. 131,124 ballots were returned and processed, and 128,256 were accepted. Over 44,700 absentee ballots were received in the last three days of the general election. The manual process to verify signatures, physically open the envelopes, and sort into precincts and count the ballots goes beyond the close of election day. We also had a larger than usual number of provisional ballots due to a change in law that required voters who had not changed their address from another county to ours prior to election day to vote by provisional ballot. The manual process for provisional ballots is more detailed and time consuming than absentee ballots. We worked almost around the clock and we reported our unofficial election results before noon Saturday, November 10, 2012 well within the time frame allowed by law. Our official results also met the legal time frame of noon on the 12th day following the general election, as did all of the supervisors in the state of Florida. We also experienced a printing error that required us to duplicate 25,000 absentee ballots that would not read on our tabulators. This was the third printer that we've used in four years with little success for total accuracy. 
we need to work on quali quality controls and the vendors who print ballots. The laws in Florida allow us to send ballots to military and overseas by email. However, because of the size of the ballot, if the voter didn't have an email that would accept the large ballot, many of the emails were returned to us or sent to the voters' junk mail. We had a team of people working to contact those voters so we could get them their ballots. I believe we need to work with the military to provide additional voter education about email addresses and we need to have shorter ballots. We also experience many difficulties with the United States Post Office. Our voters experience long delays and, and in some cases never received their ballot or even a duplicate ballot that was mailed to them. We're upgrading to the IMB barcode on the ballot envelope which will allow us to track the mailed ballots in the future. We need additional cooperation and coordination with the post office. In reference to voting equipment, Palm Beach County experienced a substantial software failure last year during a municipal election that caused us to call the, call the wrong winners until we discovered the error during our post-election audit. Apparently, our vendor was always aware of the potential failure. However, it was not caught during the state's testing and certification, nor did the vendor reveal, reveal the information until after our failure. The legislature passed a requirement this year that will require voting system vendors to disclose deficiencies known to them within 30 days or face a potential fine. This is language similar to the state of California. I believe it would be beneficial to implement this type of requirement nationally and perhaps review and update the voting system standards to re require more stringent testing, review, and disclosure. We are all watching Los Angeles County, who has proposed to create their own voting system. I believe it is time and I'm hopeful that future voting systems will use more current technology that contains off-the-shelf items at decreased cost that allows for improved administration of elections. Our state only has two vendors and the equipment offered in my opinion uses antiquated technology. I know our secretary and his team will work hard to bring additional options to Florida before we are required to replace our equipment. Finally, to quote a recently departed senior senator from Massachusetts, the work goes on, the cause endures, the hope still lives, and the dream shall never die. We are hardworking supervisors from the great state of Florida and we will always work together to bring ease and access to all of our voters during elections. Thank you very much for the opportunity today. I would be happy to answer any questions. Thank you very much. Um, <clears throat> we have a, a huge number of questions uh, up and down the, the table here among the commissioners and so we thought we'd make a slight adjustment to the procedure here so that we get all the testimony in and then we're going to double back. Uh, I, I think that might be fairest also so that we make sure that uh, some of the commissioners don't have to wait, uh, some of the supervisors don't have to wait overly long to give their testimony. So uh, with that, why don't we turn to Supervisor Cowles from Orange and we'll take it from there. Thank you.